Hello students, welcome to another tutorial session on rigid body rotation. So um, I hope that you guys have had time to go through this, uh, this question. So this is similar to a question we previously looked at. I think that was question two. So if uh, you haven't seen that, that question yet, you can just uh, find the link in the description and check it out. So you can, um, you can uh, I'll urge you guys to try out this, this question before you see this, uh, the solution, since it's something that we've already gone through. Uh, but if you haven't seen the earlier video, you can go through this one and then check out uh, the question, which is in the link below and see if you'll be able to work it out before seeing the rest of the video. Now, right, on that note, let's, uh, let's attempt this. So I hope you've read through the question and you know what you're trying to find. You can just go on to look at the solution. Okay, so um, in this case, we, we're given a wheel of radius uh, uh, six centimeters. And then this is mounted on a, uh, on a, on a, is mounted so as to rotate uh, about a horizontal axis through its center. A string of linear mass is wrapped around. So, okay, so they're telling us, they're giving us a, uh, the mass which is attached at the far end. So we have uh, a mass of 200 grams. And then apart from this, we're being told that this mass, uh, when allowed to rotate, it falls through a height of 100 centimeters. So this is practically just a meter. Uh, it does this in a time of uh, five seconds. So calculate the angular acceleration of the wheel. So they want us to find the angular acceleration in the first place. After that, they want us to find the moment of inertia. And then later on, uh, the tension in the code. So this is exactly the same as uh, uh, what we found in the in the earlier question, which is question two. All right, so um, to, to get started, the first thing that we have to do is just to create a mental uh, picture of what is happening. So we have um, something like this. So this is our wheel. So uh, we have a cord which is wrapped around this wheel. And then initially to this cord, uh, what we have is um, an object of mass 200 grams. So this object is allowed to, to fall freely. So let's take this to be the initial point of the object. So it is allowed to fall freely and let's say it falls to some, some height, the stated height, until when it is somewhere here. So let's say it falls to this position. So if it falls from point A to point B, uh, the question gives us that the difference between the two points or the height um, is basically just a, uh, a meter, so one meter. So they want us to find the angular, the angular acceleration of the wheel. So what you guys should observe is the acceleration of the, the, the mass going down, its acceleration A, when it's looked at from the, from the wheel, it is actually equivalent to the tangential acceleration of the wheel going down so it is equivalent to the tangential acceleration so if we can find the acceleration of this mass going down then that becomes our tangential acceleration here so once we get this tangential acceleration we can uh, relate it to the angular acceleration of the wheel so with those um, with that brief description i hope you guys are, are you already know what to do from there on i hope you're already trying it before i even, I even continue so um, then for, those, for, for you guys who just want to see how it's supposed to be worked out. So to get the acceleration here, given the height here, so uh, what we're going to use is this equation. S is equals to uh, ut plus half at squared. So this equation is best because we know what our S is. It's, it's our height in, um, um, in the information that is one meter. And then our initial velocity is zero. So this term is going to become zero. And then our acceleration, that's the one we want to find our t is given to us as five seconds. So if we take that into account and then substitute, what we observe is that we have our s, uh, which is a meter. So uh, here it's really up to us which direction we want to take as positive. So if we take down to be positive, you can even take it as negative. Everything you will play out just fine. So we take down to be positive and our displacement is downwards, it's positive, so our meter is equals to one over two. The first term is zero, so we only have the second term. Times our acceleration, what we want to find, and then five squared. So this becomes 25, uh, sorry, not 25. 
So here we're cross multiplying the two comes here. So we have two is equals to 25 a. So that's five squared, we get 25, 25 a. So now we're going to divide both sides by 25. And then what we get is um, two over 25 as our acceleration. So when you simplify this, um, you notice that you get the acceleration as 0 0.08 meters per second squared. So after this, the next step is now to convert this, uh, uh, this acceleration. So we did mention, I mentioned to say that the acceleration of the, of the block downwards is actually equivalent to the tangential acceleration of the wheel. So here this becomes uh, tangential acceleration is equals to the radius multiplying the angular acceleration. So want to find the angular acceleration. So this becomes the tangential over the radius. So this then becomes uh, the tangential 0 0.08 divided by the radius of the wheel in the question was given as six centimeters. So in meters, that is 0 0.06 uh, in meters. So when you divide this, we get the um, angular acceleration as 1.33 radians per second squared. Having obtained the angular acceleration, so this is the first thing that they wanted us to find. The second step now, they want us to find um, the moment of initia. So uh, the procedure for moment of initia is similar to what we've been looking at, what, what, what we did again in the same question. So now we're going to evaluate uh, the behavior of the object um, in terms of the rotation of this, and then also how this is falling going down. So um, when you look at the object, uh, the wheel itself, um, we're going to evaluate its torque. So we should remember that the turning effect of the, of the wheel is given by the product of the torque, the moment of initial times the angular acceleration. So from here, what we have is um, also torque is given by the force times the radius. So once we have this, then we can equate the right hand side. And now we have uh, force times R is equals to I times alpha. And then this now implies that force is equals to uh, the moment of initial multiplying the angular acceleration over the radius. Now, what I want you guys to observe is what appeared to, to the wheel as the tangential, tangential force which is this force here, tangential force, the one we labeled as F, to the block, uh, that is actually the tension in our string. So the two are the same. So we can use F or we can use T. So let's use T for tension. So then we can write our equation as uh, T is equals to I alpha over R. Let's keep this as our equation one. The next part now is to come to our block. What is happening to our block? So our block, there are two forces here. We have the weight going down, that is mg. And then we have the tension going up. So when we sum the equations in the y-axis, what we have is, remember we said we're taking down to be positive. So if we keep with that behavior, then we have mg going down minus t going up. This is giving us ma. So from here, we substitute our expression for, uh, for t. This becomes mg minus uh, moment of initial alpha over r this is equal to uh, this is equal to uh, to ma from here there are various ways you can work it out you can start uh, substitution substituting just here uh, or you can you can take it or uh, to, to the end since here we already know what uh, what the mass is g is uh, we know what alpha and r are, what they are we know what a and what the other term is a so you can easily substitute here and start getting the value. Or we can make I the subject of the formula. If we did that, we'd have mg, and this term comes this side, comes minus ma. The other term goes the other side, this becomes plus um, I alpha. Then from here, we only want uh, I, uh, this is over R. We only want I here, so we can cross multiply the R. This becomes R, mg minus R, ma this is equals to i alpha and then from here we make alpha the subject so we can even factor out the r in here since it is common so we, we have 
um, RIM, and then this is over alpha. This is multiplying uh, G minus A. This is equal to, uh, to I. So uh, the only difference I think between this equation and what we had in the, in the previous one is uh, we expressed alpha in terms of, uh, in terms of uh, linear acceleration, which you guys can easily do. I'm sure you, 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 are, you, can, you can easily show that uh, if you did that, this would become R squared. Try, try to do that and see if, if, you, if you reach this over A, and then this is G minus A is equals to I. But even from here, you can substitute it just to give you the answer. So uh, if you worked with this one, you can work with that to, to work. If you worked with this one, uh, what you notice is um, the radius squared, that is just zero point. Uh, 0 0.6 squared, the mass squared, that is 0 0.2, uh, not, the mass is not squared, just the mass, and then this is over the linear acceleration, which is 0 0.08, and then g is 9.8, minus the linear acceleration again, 0 0.08, and then from here, this is equal to, to i. So you can simplify all this, and then what you should see is, um, I comes out as uh, equal to, um, that's 0 0.0875 kg. And then this is meter squared. So once you obtain this, the only remaining thing now is the, the tension in the stream. So for the tension, if you recall, we had the expression for tension as equal to, um, I alpha over R. So from here, you can substitute right away. So the, the moment of initial, we're just from finding that, that is 0 0.0874, 75. Uh, that's kg, the meter squared. This is over the radius, the radius that's 0 0.06. And this is multiplying um, the alpha, the angular acceleration, 1.33. And then this is in radians per second squared. This is in meters. So if you work this one out, the tension should come out as 1.94 um, uh, newtons. Okay, so yeah, you can try it out like this. All right, so uh, basically this is how you, how you, how you, how you work it out. Uh, this is how, uh, what, what you expected you guys to do it. I hope you did manage to work it out after seeing um, uh, the other solution uh, for question two. Okay, so the next question that, um, that I'll ask you guys to look at is um, uh, this one. So this is basically just question seven uh, in this series. Um, so the idea is that you're supposed to, to use here as well already seen them. I hope you guys will be able to work them out. Um, you can easily relate this to, uh, to question question three. The only difference here, uh, just, just a few key things. So uh, let me help you guys. You, get, you can pr practically pause the video here and try to, to, to create a diagram of what the question is asking, uh, is asking us to find. Um, but then let's see how it looks like. So if this is the horizontal surface, what we're saying is you have an, an, an inclined plane that is something like this. And then somewhere at the base here, we have a wheel that has some initial speed. Now, what I'm saying is, uh, want to find how high uh, this wheel has to go before it comes to rest. So you want to find its position somewhere here. So you want to find that position somewhere there, yeah. Um, so let's see how high yes so you want to find the height from from the bottom to where it is given that um yeah the, you have negligible rolling friction here so all you want to keep in mind here you're going to use um the ideas of energies here so you're going to compare the energy at this point you say at a to the energy at point b so uh one key thing is at point a if you take point a as the reference point there's no potential energy here you only have uh, rotational kinetic energy and translational kinetic energy. But at point uh, point B, so if this is your point B, point B, there is no translational kinetic energy uh, and there's no uh, rotational kinetic energy. 
there's the only form of energy which is which is going to be present here is is potential so try to try to work it out like that and since it's the same object we are basically looking at pe um so at a there is no pe i hope you're able to see uh, yeah they practically just mentioned it at a you only have uh, ke rotational plus ke translation or equal to and then at that point you don't have those terms you only have potential so you have pe and b so try to work out uh, to work, work it out with this you're going to yeah, from here you should be able to to, to get the, the height really it's almost direct forward okay so um let me know if if you struggle finishing up this question and if you do leave a comment and then we see if i'll, if I'll have to make a video on, on this one as well all right you guys uh, uh, see you in the next video